From Mintech, the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center, this is Talking Technicians, the podcast about technicians, who they are, what they do, and where they come from. I'm your host, Peter Kazarnoff. I teach technicians and engineers at Portland Community College. Each episode, you'll meet a working technician and hear their story. That means real interviews with real technicians about real jobs. And at the end of each episode, I'll suggest actions you can take if you want to become a technician, too. In this episode, you'll meet Kirsten Welsh. Kirsten is a technician at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Kirsten, welcome to Talking Technicians. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, Where do you live? I live here in Livermore, California. Uh, My name's Kirsten Welcher, and I've lived here for two years now in Livermore. And um, what's something that people might know not know about Livermore, California? I've never been there. So uh, something people might not know is that our fire department has the Centennial Light. It's the world's longest lasting light bulb and has been on since 1901. That is amazing. Do you know what it's made out of? How is that possible that one light bulb has been on since 1901? So... From what I've read, it's mostly on all of the time. Uh, There's been instances where it's been turned off. I know, I can't speak for them, but I do know uh, during these latest fires, uh, there's been rolling blackouts. So Mm -hmm. they've had to cut the power in some parts of the town. So I can't Mm -hmm. say it's been on during (laughs) these last couple months, but for the Mm -hmm. most part, it is on. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen it or touched it? I have seen it. (laughs) Uh-huh. <laughs> that's that's uh, so neat. I haven't heard before that there was one light bulb that's been on since 1901. That is amazing. Uh, so Kirsten, uh, where do you work and what's your job title? What do you do? So I work at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory at their ignition national ignition facility. And I am an electronics technologist. So I am currently on the maintenance side of the week and I am a beam control operator. So most of my day is spent in the control room, uh, which is modeled after NASA's control room uh, in Houston, Texas. So if you can think of a bunch of uh, desks and people behind them all looking at a screen, um, that's kind of what it's like modeled after. Uh, We don't have headsets, but we do have radios. um, And it's definitely a cool experience. (laughs) Uh, So tell me a little bit more about the National Ignition Facility. That sounds incredibly dangerous. Uh, What is it? (laughs) So uh, the goal of the National Ignition Facility is to create fusion energy, which is uh, what the sun runs off of. So we're trying to create a mini sun in our target chamber. And how we do this is we point 192 beams onto a small hall room, which is a target that's roughly the size of a pencil eraser. And what a lot of people don't know is that we create fusion every time uh, with every shot, uh, but we just don't get ignition every time, uh, which is why it's called the National Ignition Facility. That is amazing. So there are 192 lasers that are pointing at something the size of a pencil eraser? Correct. (laughs) Wow. Uh, What's the pencil eraser made out of? Uh, Well, it depends. So uh, we don't always try to do uh, national ignition, uh, ignition shots. We do various experiments because we have a very unique setup. Um, in our target chamber and it's there's a lot of different target types actually depending on the shot Uh, like we have a well like a gold sphere kind of target which is tricky to (laughs) align given that uh, it reflects light and it doesn't it's not always the easiest (laughs) uh, on our cameras to pick up. And uh, when you say shot, uh, what do you mean by shot? What is a shot at the National Ignition Facility? Uh, So that is, shots are on the A side of the week, which is where we do our experiments. So when I say a shot, I mean an experiment um, where we have, we are either sending light to the target chamber. And I should be 
uh, tricky when I, I should word this better because there we have different kinds of shots. Not all of our shots go to the target chamber. How long does a shot last? How long are those 192 lasers on for? Oh boy, that really depends. Um, uh -huh. If the experiment is not that difficult, it can we can do like two in a day, but the most, the longest ones are the arc shots, which take the whole entire shift and maybe more, which is a 12 hour shot cycle, um, just because there's so many steps that go into it. And you said that you work on the maintenance side of the week. Uh, so what does that mean? What do you maintain? So uh, the maintenance side of the week, we do have our uh, weekly maintenance, which is pretty easy. Um, it's not that difficult, but uh, it's just things that need to be done to make sure that all of our um, devices are working correctly. Uh, and with the maintenance side, there's also days where, um, you know, like there's a monthly thing that you have to do, um, which is nice. Uh, and so you, on the maintenance side, you can get uh, experience with a different procedures that you wouldn't normally see on a weekly basis. And do you work by yourself or do you work in a team? I work in a team. So usually it is two people on shift. Um, Fridays and Saturdays, it is a coworker and myself. And now we are having, uh, and when I say that, I mean just in our little console group in beam control. Uh, but now we have new hires coming in. Uh, so we are working together in training with them and getting them up to speed. Wow. Um, so when new people come on, um, about how much uh, could a starting technician expect to make? Uh, I came here with a starting salary of 70000 and uh, that was the highest paid in my class. Uh, the median of if you're like going, you're staying in the Midwest or you're going off to the East Coast, that's going to be about fifty to $65,000. Uh, I am paid more just to compensate, I would say, um, with the high cost of living out here. And do you remember what it felt like your first day of work, your first day being a technician? I do. Uh, I'm going to say uh, quotation marks around technician because uh, my first day, I just went to the lab and I got my badge. Uh, so when you go to the lab, there is security all around the perimeter at the gates and they're gonna make they're gonna check your badge and then allow you to go through. So my first day I went to the badge office and I got all that set up. And at that time I was a contractor. And so um, it was just mainly filling out paperwork and they're explaining the job duties to me. And that was basically about it for my first day. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> And how did you become a technician? What was your work experience uh, before you worked at the National Ignition Facility? So my first job ever was in high school and it was just a cook. Um, and then I went into college. Uh, I went to Indian Hills in Ottumwa, Iowa to become a, a laser technician. Uh, so while I was in college, I did a um, bunch of different work studies. I was a lab technician there, uh, and that was mainly just doing things around the lab, keeping it clean, um, staying late if other students wanted to help or wanted to work extra. So being in that uh, lab role really helped hone my technician skills, but prior to college, I really didn't have much. And before coming to Indian Hills to join the optics technician program, what did you think that technicians did? Oh, uh, I mostly thought like, you know, pharmacy technicians or like uh, Indian Hills also has like an x-ray technician. Um, I thought it was mostly just you know, hospital work. Um, I never really thought about it too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And what was uh, the most difficult part of going through uh, that program? Uh, there was a lot of challenges. I would say uh, starting off, uh, I was pretty intimidated by a lot of the guys in my class until I got to know them, of course. Um, I had not a lot of experience with electronics. I had like basic formula experience, but putting together, um, you know, schematics was a little bit confusing to me because I, you know, just the diagram is not exactly what you're physically going to, uh, you're going to wire together. But luckily, um, I got some uh, people to help me and that really, that really uh, made it better. <laughs> what advice would you give other students if they were starting a technician program, uh, just like you did? I would say if you have any problems, you should definitely talk to your teach your professor um, when you have a problem. Because sometimes I would just sit there trying to figure it out myself, and that's okay for the first like ten to twenty minutes, but it's not going to help you. Uh, like you know, at thirty minutes, you should really get some help um, if you're struggling. And also, professors are uh, they they're that's their job. They want to help they they want to teach you. So if you have any problems, you should definitely ask. Uh, great. Other than that, just go through it. Uh, it's definitely worth it in the end. So what's something unexpected about being a technician that you only learned after you started working? So this really goes into my work, but uh, something that comes up a lot is two things. And we say trust, but verify. So if a coworker tells you a task is complete, you should trust them, but verify by double checking. It never hurts to make sure that the work is done correctly. And another thing that comes up is deadline pressure. Uh, the facility always wants to be the most efficient, so it can be stressful when you're behind, but it's important to take it slow because if you rush things and mess it up, that's more time lost. So you have to do it right the first time. And that's it, something just important to remember. So Kirsten, thanks so much for chatting with me. Do you have any final call to action? If someone out there is interested in being a technician like you, what should they do? I would say uh, you can always tour a place. Uh, if you're from in, or if you're from Iowa, there's certainly Indian Hills, and they have dates where you can come in and uh, see what the class would be like. That was certainly helpful for me. That's why I went to Indian Hills in the first place. I had gone to those uh, career days, so to speak. Uh, but if you're not from Iowa, there's other states too, of course. Um, I work with people from North Carolina and Texas, and there's even a certificate program out here in the Bay Area. So I'd say do some searching, and once you find a place, maybe tour it, um, see, and get a feel for it, if that's really, you know, right for you. Great advice. So, Kirsten, thank you very much for being on Talking Technicians. I really appreciate it, and I loved hearing about the work that you do. Thank you. I had a great time. Talking Technicians Bye is now. produced by Mintech, the Micro Nano Technology Education Center, through financial support from the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Grant Program. Opinions expressed on this podcast do not necessarily represent those of the National Science Foundation. Join the conversation. If you are a working technician or know someone who is, reach out to us at info at talkingtechnicians.org. We are always looking out for great guests to share more stories with you.